What's up guys, welcome back to Let's Play Gungrave Overdose! I so I know it's been a while since the last upload, and I can attribute that to basically just being really busy, and I know that's no excuse, but I finally came back to Day Shift, and I have a still consistent but much different schedule than I had when I was working overnight. So uh, my upload, my time to actually work on videos has changed, and I kind of just went on hiatus a little bit to focus on some other priorities. But I do intend to finish Overdose, and I'm going to be working on the Sengoku Boss Row 2 Let's Play pretty soon here. But other than that, again, like I said, I'm mostly taking a break from Let's Play projects, but I definitely want to finish what I started, especially when I care about this game so much. So we're moving on to one of the most long, drawn-out encounters in the entire game, and I'm not looking forward to it. At least it's decently challenging. It's the long gauntlet here at the airstrip of military vehicles and all sorts of other hellish nightmares coming at us, uh, keeping us from chasing down the uh, the Corsione family as they're trying to escape. So we have these uh, armored personnel carriers here with missile launchers and machine gun turrets on top. And then uh, we have these guys, of course, which I cannot get enough of in their impossible to dodge melee ground pound attack. Um, at least there, you have a lot of room to deal with them out here, but the worst part of this by far is these suicidal org men. They come from the sky and they're jetpacks. I think this might be the first time we're introduced to the, the jetpack ones, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, these guys just being a pain in the ass overall. But again, we're not at least we're not trapped in that room where you had to fight three of them in that small chamber with no way in or out, like in that previous encounter in the last, the last level. Yeah, that was pretty rough. And again, much as the same way with the suicidal org men, we have a little bit more room to dodge them. That's not going to stop me from being an idiot and running into them anyway. Yeah, we have to go through several rounds of this. Pretty soon there's going to be a attack helicopter coming in, and that's going to be the toughest enemy by far, but not necessarily the most dangerous because it comes at you and uh, it makes passes at you, so it's not going to sit there and try to kill you all at one time. Uh, it's going to use its attack pattern, and then it's going to just fly away and come back. We're going to see that pretty soon. The thing about it is, if you stay in one place, enemies just keep coming, so we have to reach the end of the airstrip. But that's still not going to change the fact that there's a lot of enemies you have to fight, and the helicopter is actually no exception. You may think, oh, let me just defeat the helicopter right away so we don't have to fight at the end. But another one will come at the end anyway. So I, I really haven't found a good way to optimize this area to where, like, using... Like I did in that one room with the, uh, well, I can't even describe it at this point, so it's, there's no point, but... Yeah, I haven't found a way to optimize this encounter where just, you know, using demolition shots at opportune times can get us through quickly. It's sort of just a, uh, a grind game to get through all these enemies and get to the end. So, I'm mainly just focusing on the bigger enemies. As soon as the armor personnel characters are defeated, I'll move on to the next part. And uh, as soon as we get to the end, we'll be in good shape. Either way, we have to destroy the helicopter pretty much twice, because the first one, like I said, is going to fight us regardless, and then another one comes at the end. So we, we can leave this one alive, we can kill it now, it's whatever, but we only have a very small window of time to get a good lock on it and deal some good damage. The uh, charge shots are pretty effective on it if you can actually time it right, because then you can stagger it a little bit, but... It's not exactly feasible to do. And then trying to use a uh, forward-firing demolition shot on the helicopter is also tricky because you need to sort of auto-aim in the general direction of the helicopter when you trigger it, and the game doesn't always register that. So it's not, it's not the easiest thing to do in the world. Maybe better off using this one with the, uh, the missiles, which actually did a pretty good job of hitting it there. It seemed like the camera did auto-focus on the helicopter that time, so had we been using a a forward firing one it probably would have we probably would have gotten lucky there and it would have targeted it but yeah this this whole encounter does make for a nice you know one video long section we're actually coming up pretty close to the end of the game here we are just steamrolling through the last act right now pretty much and it's only going to get crazier from here this game does not let go until the very end as a good action game should, you know, this it just cranks up the action and then does not let go until it's all over. So, not that this is going to be the, the end or anything, we've got a, still a fair bit to go, but we're definitely in the last act. I definitely want to be careful now that I'm out of demolition shots, maybe I can grind for them off the helicopter here.
These guys, <laughs> it requires two of them to hold that warhead up. And yet it's still not enough to kill us. Yeah, this section does make for at least one good video because it's one long encounter with a boss at the end and it's exactly 15 minutes. So it worked out just fine. This is pretty dangerous. One thing that I, I can say is a, a strategy if you wanted to is just sort of box... If this uh, if this robot guy wasn't here, it'd be a little bit easier, but you can box yourself in the corner with one of the APCs and just melee it to death using the, uh, the standstill, just swinging your coffin around back and forth. But... The problem with that is when it finally explodes after you kill it, it deals some splash damage to you. But it's it's more effective that you can hide from the attacks of not only the APCs you're hiding under and the one that is across from you, but uh, you don't have to worry about you know being mobile and dodging attacks or anything like that. It's, it's pretty nice. It's it's very cheap, but like I said, it's almost not worth it because you just take damage in the end anyway. So. Speaking of damage, we've taken a lot of it to get to this point, but again, I just wanted to be through with this as fast as possible and uh, get to the end where I have to fight the helicopter here because I, I'm pretty sure I have a good strategy for it. I just wanted to make sure I got to the end. I had to use my demolition shot there to keep myself alive when fighting the APC. So we're going to be side strafing while it's using its machine gun because there's no good way to dodge that. And we want to keep the damage on him while it's using that because at least he'll be stationary. And then he uses his missile launchers, which obviously is a terrible idea if you're fighting us, because if you haven't discovered by now, the missiles just come right back. I am rubber and you are glue, apparently. These two APCs have boxed us in back here, but we don't even have to worry about them, I don't think. As long as we defeat the helicopter, we can move on. But I might be, might be able to go over here and show you that strategy I was talking about, though. Now, it's... The turret's at an awkward angle, so... Maybe not. But yeah, just because the helicopter is trying to finish its attack cycle, it'll keep using the rockets, even though you've already proven that it just deals more damage to it than it does to you. At least the APCs are smart enough to alternate. Eventually, you'll actually destroy the missile launchers on the helicopter, though. Um, you'll destroy them one at a time, so it only has one uh, launcher left. See, that's the way it is right now. It's missing one of its little wings. But it still will not fire its machine gun while it's shooting rockets at you. Alright, we got to wait for maybe one more pass before we can destroy it. I think the lower it is on health, the, the faster it'll speed up its attack pattern. So it may uh, it may use its machine gun for longer and alternate um, to its missiles more rapidly. All right, let's get the second one over with. Not much we can do about that, unfortunately. It's not really any tougher than the previous one. It should be exactly the same. It just looks all in mint pristine condition because we haven't done any damage to it yet. Just waiting for this thing to come back and fight you some more is just really aggravating. It's one of the reasons why I really don't like this encounter. And it took me a long time to get through my first time through the game. At least we get that nice orange target indicator telling us where the helicopter's coming from and when. Alright, so I cut down this fight a little bit because I figured you guys didn't want to see the same repetitive loops over and over again until I beat this thing. It's going to run away one more time before we finish it off. I was probably one rocket away from killing it had it fired another one, but it decided not to. Self-preservation and all. Okay. Rather anticlimactic finish, but oh well, we're moving on. I 
make a disgusting mess. I also know I have to beat you. Huh. So I guess Bungie got necrolized too, and he's now a dead man. Dead man. Alright, time for a boss battle against Bunji Kugashira again for the second time. Now, we all know how much I infamously hated his fight in the first game, and they've definitely toned it down a bit for this one. Maybe because his um, necrolization was a little bit flawed, maybe, perhaps? Uh, I'm not sure what the real continuity as far as the game is concerned. I know uh, in the anime, he's, he's straight up dead. I mean, he was... He was never, um, in the anime's continuity, he was never um, necrolized, never turned into a superior or anything like that. He was just a regular, regular guy, with maybe some physical enhancements a little bit. But uh, it feels like having the coffin for this fight is a little unfair. It feels like, just out of honor for Bungie, it should be just a one-on-one -on -one duel with just our guns. He does have these weird, um, he must be infected with seed, as must be what it is, because he has these weird seed phantasm things that come out of him in the form of like, a wolf and little like rabbit looking things and there there's his main attacks. He also does his signature kick that he did against us in the first game, except it's far less devastating now. He will try to go on top of these little power station things and uh, try to heal himself, but we're gonna interrupt that obviously. He doesn't heal himself nearly as much as he did in the previous game. But yeah, um, he's voiced by Steve Bloom. I really don't like his characterization in Overdose. I like that they brought him back for this one last moment. But I also don't know why he still wants to fight us. I mean, he seems kind of um, kind of rogue in this whole thing. Like, he just wants to fight us. Just That's the whole reason why he came back, is just to finish what he started with us. But Millennium is gone. Harry's gone. The rest of your friends are gone. And what is it even worth anymore? I mean, if only he could team up with us and help us take down um, the Corsiani family, that would be even better. Because he's not really allied with them at all. They don't even acknowledge him as far as I know. Oh well, time to put him down for good. I <laughs> love the, the nice touch of the birds flying away and everything. <sighs> you poor old soul.